Okay, welcome to Chapter 4 of the FSAP project for Accounting 211. We are on our Excel spreadsheet again, and so you should open up the same file that you used for the first, um, the second project actually. And we're going to add a new sheet move that sheet behind chapter three please make sure your sheets are in order you should have all your financial statements first your stock sheet chapter one chapter two chapter three and now rename this sheet chapter four be neat no spelling errors press enter so now we have a brand new sheet so let's go to the project and see what we have to do so as always, you're going to go to the home page, click on the financial statement analysis project. You're going to go up here to the project itself, accounting concepts to 11 semester long project. You're going to download it. Then I'm going to open it. It should open in Word. Then we're going to go down to Chapter 4. So we have eight requirements for Chapter 4. Let's copy the first requirement and go to our spreadsheet. And we'll just come down a few lines and I'll paste it in. Again, I have to move mine over. That's okay. I'm going to make this a little bit wider. And then I'm going to word wrap it. All right. So the first requirement says calculate and show the common size percentages on the income statement for all three years. So let's go to our income statement. We talked about this in class. And you can see we have our three years. And remember to common size means we're gonna set net sales at 100% and then everything down to net income, which is right here, we're gonna do percent as a percentage of net sales. So first thing I'm gonna do is just go over here and go equal to, um, I wanna go ahead, instead of making this a name, I want to make it the actual cell. So in this case, B3, and I'm, going to divide B3 by itself and I'm going to say B3. The reason I'm not using the name is because I do not want it when I copy it over I don't want it to copy the name because then it will just cop it will take 100% of this particular cell not the relative cells which is what I want to do. So I do that it's going to say one and now I'm going to put that in a percentage so it's 100%. Now what I want to do is take each of these rows and I'm going to take them as a percentage of my net sales. So I want net sales to stay the same. I, w I want everything divided by this, this row, B3. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go up here and right in between the B and the 3, I'm going to put a dollar sign. That's gonna freeze that row. So when I go to copy that down to each row after this, it will stay B3, and I'll show you how that works. So here I am right here. Notice that I have my dollar sign, that is freezing the three. So when I copy this down, this number right here is gonna change to B4 because I'm copying it down a row. This will not move it will stay a three because I want to be able to divide everything by B3 okay so I'm just going to 
copy and paste to here because I have a blank line. I don't want to put a percentage in the blank line. And you can see what happened. Here I have B4, which is what I want, divided by B3. That's what this cell says. And so you can see, for me, cost of sales is 56% of net sales. My gross profit is 44%, right? Which gives me a gross margin. I get 44 cents out of every dollar that I earn. My operating in income is 7%. Okay, so I've done that. Now I'm going to copy this formula again but this time I'm going to skip over my blank and I'm going to co copy it all the way down to net income. I'm going to double check it should say B9 divided by B3 and you can see that these are less than zero because look how small this number is in comparison to that. So I can uh, increase my decimals if I want to. I could do like one decimal place. So if I'm going to do that, I'm going to do it for the whole row just so I can see something other than a zero. And so you'll see here that interest expense is a half of a percent. Other net income, very, very small amount as you can see, and it's actually a negative number. Income before Income taxes, 6.4%. They pay 1.6% of their sales in income taxes. And their net income, that's every dollar they brought home, was almost 5%. Okay, so that was the first year. I'm going to go up here and put 2021. Now, the great thing about putting in my dollar sign, I didn't have to do it to copy it. Well, I had to do it to copy down. But I don't want to put a dollar sign over here because when I copy it over, I want the B's to change to C because I then want to do the exact same thing with this row. So I'm just going to copy all of these over and paste. And I'm going to double check. So this is taking C3 divided by C3. This is taking C4 divided by C3. So everything's working well. And then I'm going to put this at 2022. So that's as easy as it gets. So if you do your um, formulas correctly, you can just simply copy them from one row to the other. You have to know what to keep steady and what to change. So in this case, I wanted to be able to change the row of the numerator, but not the denominator and I wanted to be able to change the column. So my common size analysis is all done. We can take a look at it. We can see it didn't really change much from year to year. So nothing really alarming in the common size analysis. Our net, our, um, oh, I'm sorry, this is 20, 2019. And this is 2018. Okay, so we made a little bit less in 2018, but honestly, it's pretty sta stable and steady across all of the years. I'm gonna go ahead and save my worksheet. I'm gonna go over to my chapter three, I mean chapter four, I'm sorry. And then I'm just gonna put right here, just so I know, common, and I make sure I know I did it. Size analysis is on. Statement of operations, which is what mine's called. Your, yours may be called something different. So make sure you use the name uh, of your um, actual statement. Okay. So let's go back to the assignment. Number two, let's copy that over. Just come down a couple of rows. And 
we are going to word wrap this and then we're going to replace this with a two. How have the percentages for gross margin and operating income changed over the past three years? So I calculated my percentage for gross margin when I did my common size analysis. So I can just enter gross, whoops, I'm so sorry, gross margin right here. And I'm going to right justify it. I don't know why it's not, oh, because I need to put the right justify on. Right justify it. And then for the past three years, let me insert a row here so I can put my years. So it's going to be 2021, 20, 2020, 20, and 2019. Oh, I think it was 2020, 2019. Sorry about that. 2020, 2019, and 2018. All right, so I'm going to go back to my statement of operations where I calculated my gross margin. And that would be right here. Here's my gross margin. And I'm going to name it just like we have named everything, every other cell that we've been using. So I'm going to go up here and I'm going to say gross. Oh, and look, they changed the years on me again. It is 2021, 2019, and 2018. So I'll go back and change it in a second. Gross margin 2021. Enter. I'm going to name this one. gross margin. Remember no spaces and it's easier to read if you use camel cap letters. 2019 enter. Can't put numbers on the beginning just at the end. And then I'm going to name this one gross margin 2018. All right so let's go back to my chapter four. And now this is going to be 2021 equal to gross margin 2021. There it is. Equal to gross margin 2019 and equal to gross margin 2018. I want to format these so they look nice. I'm going to do a percentage and I'll do one decimal place and then the next thing I have to do is look at the percentage for operating income which we also calculated so I'm going to go up here and enter operating income and I'm going to write justify that Oh, let's see what happened here. I'm just going to redo this. I don't know why it won't write justify. I think because I don't know what I did here. Oh, well, I might, well, let me clear it out. Clear contents. I like things neat. And I'm also going to do clear all. All right, I'm going to retype that in. Gross margin. And then I'm going to click the right justify button, which it's clicked. There it goes. All right. Okay, let me go back and get my percentages for operating income. So I'll click back to operating income. And here are my percentages. Now, this is an operating income. It's operating income is a percentage of net sales. So this is going to be a long name, um, but it's really important that you use all of it because otherwise it's not going to be descriptive when you get on your other page and Whoever's looking at your sheet, or if you have to look back at your sheet, you have no idea what you did. It takes a second to type it all in. I understand that. And if you want to, you can just double click and copy it. And then when you go to name your next one, you can paste it. Just don't forget to change your year at the end. And that'll make it go a little bit faster.
Okay, so now I have operating income as a percentage of net sales for 2021, 20, <clears throat> 2019, and 2018. So I'm going to go back to, whoops, sorry, go back to my sheet, chapter four. I'm going to start putting equal operating, and I want the in operating income as a percentage of net sales for 2021 equal operating as a net sale of 2019 and then equals operating of net sales of 2018. Again, I'm going to go ahead and do these as a percentage with one decimal. Okay, so I've got all those in. Now the question asks, how have the percentages for gross margin and operating income changed? And if I look at these changes, they have changed very little. Operating income has dropped some, but gross margin really hasn't changed at all. So I'm gonna go over here and say gross margin has not changed very much from 2021 to, I mean, 2018, sorry, to 2021. And I'm gonna, then I'm gonna go here and I'm gonna say operating income as a percentage. It's very important that you use all these words. Words have meaning. Net sales has dropped Actually, it's gone up now that I look at it. I'm sorry, I keep forgetting. And you need to pay attention to this too. These are in reverse. So this is going up almost a percent. Has gone up about a percentage point from 2018 to 2021. And I'm going to word wrap that one. So I'm going to bring this sorry I'm gonna bring this column out slightly and wrap this one and then wrap this one okay great what the next um, thing is we have to do we're gonna copy it over number three come down a few rows we're gonna paste, we're gonna wrap the text. I'm gonna change this to a three. All right, it says, calculate the gross margin for the past three years. Has it gone up or down? Well, we've already done that, right? Again, we've already done that, so we don't have to do that. And this, this question actually seems to repeat. So I'm gonna tell you, I am going to um, take that question out. So I'm just going to put a note here. Do not do this question. And you can do the same thing in your worksheet. And then next uh, time I do this assignment, I will probably take that question out because it's, it's a duplicate. All right, let's go down to number four. Okay, so we're gonna paste here, word wrap. I'm gonna replace this with a four. And now I'm gonna calculate the net income percentage. Again, which I've already done. So I'm gonna go back to my sheet and I have my net income percentage right here. So again, I'm gonna name it net income percentage of net sales 2021 enter I'm gonna copy it so I don't have to retype all of that again and go to the next one and paste but I'm gonna change my year enter same here copy paste 
and change my year. Okay, so now I have all my names again. If you need to pause the video, I'm hoping I'm not going too fast for you. Go ahead and do that until you complete this step. Okay, I'm gonna go back to my chapter four sheet and I'm gonna type right here, net income as a percentage of net sales. I'm going to right align it and 2021, 2019, 2018. Now I'm just going to go equal to and start typing net income. And here's the one I want. Let's do 2019, start typing. Here's the one I want. And then here is the one I want. I'm going to go ahead and format these as percentages with one decimal place. Okay. So I've got that done and it says, has it gone up or down? So for me, it's gone slightly up. So net income as a percentage, complete sentences, please, no misspellings, has gone up by about one half of a percent from 2018 to 2019. Okay. So I'm going to wrap the text. Okay, so we finished number four. I'm going to save my sheet again. I like to save it pretty frequently. I know it auto saves, but that way I just know that I've gotten um, each question saved as I've completed them. Okay, I'm going to go to here and I'm going to double click on this. Number five, paste, wrap text, change this to a five. All right, what industry and sector are your company part of? So we have to do some research to answer this question. Let me go to Yahoo Finance first and see how that goes. I'm going to search for my company. And there it is. And I'm gonna see if perhaps they tell me what industry my company is part of. So I can go to my profile. So all of these tabs up here tell me something about this particular company. So I'm gonna to go to the profile. And you can see right here the sector is consumer cyclical and the industry is specialty retail. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and put that on my spreadsheet and I can probably just copy it. Let's see if that works. I'm going to paste it as just text. There we go. Perfect. So my sector is consumer cyclical and my industry is specialty retail. And then because this is not in my actual spreadsheet, I have to put a reference. If you get yours from someplace else, that's fine. You can find a reference for it. So I'm going to go back to 
the spreadsheet, I'm going to copy the URL, the exact URL where I got the information so that if somebody clicks on it, they'll come right to this page. And under here, I'm just going to paste that URL. I'll probably make this a little bit bigger. Okay, so there's my reference for number five. So let's go back, let's do number six. Copy that. Word wrap it. Let's change that to a six. Okay, so it says go to readyratios.com and locate the median gross margin ratio and profit margin, which is the net income percentage for the industry that your company belongs to. So right now I'm gonna go here and I'm gonna go to industry and then I'm gonna go AAP because that's my company. And then I need two metrics. I need profit margin. Oh, no, I need gross margin, median gross margin, if I can find it, but I should be able to. Gross margin ratio and profit margin. And in parentheses, net income percentage, just so I know what I'm talking about. Okay, I'm going to write justify those. And I'm going to readyratios.com. I'm going to go up here. And I want to do some industry benchmarking. And I'm going to look for AAP. Here's the industry. And I want to compare with industry ratios. It says, whoops, I'm doing worse. But remember, I also need the year that I am doing this. So let's see if I can find this particular year. I may not be able to on this site. A lot of this information are behind what we call paywalls and you actually have to pay for it. So I'm okay if you just get whichever percentage is on here right now. So let's go on, we're gonna go down and we're looking for, remember, we're looking for the gross margin ratio. So here it is right here. So with the industry ratios in this particular industry, the average is 18.5 and AAP is at 44.3. So I'm probably gonna write that down. So for gross margin, industry is 18.5% and they are at 44.3. Then I'm gonna look for the net income. Hopefully they have it. Profit margin, here it is right here, profit margin. And the industry is 3.4. And AAP is 4.9. And that's within their industry. Remember, these um, ones on this side are with all industry ratios. All right. So we're just keeping it on their particular industry. Now, notice their industry is 5531, but they're comparing it to all industries in the 5500 and that's fine for this project. You might want to get more specific, but again, most of this information is behind a paywall. Um, we have a service downstairs in the Bulldog Room 
with all the uh, signage on the outside that provides um, financial ratios, but you have to be in that room to access that data. All right, so we're gonna go back to our spreadsheet and we're gonna put in the industry gross margin ratio was uh, 18.5 and AAPs was 44.3 and the industry was 3.4 profit margin and we are 4.9. Now notice that's exactly what we were last year. So that's where they got that, that ratio. So we actually did get the most current data. Um, we can look at the gross margin and we calculated 44% and we got 44.3. What we really needed was the industry. Okay, so since I pulled those ratios off of this website, I want to go back and get the URL for my references and you want the same exact page. So it must be, and we're going to paste that right there. Okay, so we've got a reference. All right, now the question, once we get it, says, is your company doing better or worse in the industries according to these particular ratios? I'm going to write a little, since it asked me about both and one, I'm going to go ahead and write this off, write this here. And I'm going to, let me take the difference. That's always nice to have exact numbers. So I'm gonna take this minus the industry, and I'm also gonna then copy it down. Now these are in percentages, so I'm not gonna do any formatting or conversion to it because it'll convert it to a lower percentage. And then I'm gonna write right here, according to the industry ratios on ready ratios.com AAP is doing much better than the industry. Remember, I'm gonna word wrap this once I'm done, so. With the gross margin and slightly better than the industry when comparing. And you put this in your own words, profit margin but complete sentences okay and let's go ahead and word wrap this and there we go and I don't really like it there so you know what I'm gonna do I'm gonna go back I'm gonna cut this and paste it underneath and then wrap it so that I don't have that big gap between my two ratios all right, so we did six. Let's go back to the questions. We're gonna copy, paste over here. I'm gonna wrap the text. I'm gonna make this number eight. Please make sure that all of your columns can be seen. Let me show you what I saw a lot of the last time. Let's see if I can get it to you. Okay, do you see when you get that hat, that uh, number sign in here? That's when your columns are too small. Doesn't normally happen with something this little because obviously most columns are wider than this. But if you're getting those when there should be a number there, please widen your column until you can see all the numbers. Please make sure that your rows are deep enough to be read. I don't need to be moving rows or anybody else when they're looking at your spreadsheets trying to make rows wider or, or taller. So I will be taking off more points for those kinds of things. 
So make sure that you're very neat and careful on this project. All right, I'm going to save this. So the question says, what prepaid... Oh, this is number seven. I'm so sorry. Let's go back. Number seven. What prepaid expenses are shown on the balance sheet? Okay, so let's go look at our balance sheet. See so if we can find prepaid expenses. And prepaid expenses would be under other current assets, or you may have something that says prepaid expenses. It will be under current assets. It will not be under long-term assets. So you can see, I just have this big smash of a thing called other current assets. So I'm gonna have to go back to my, this is why I had you download your, your whole thing. I'm gonna pull up my report. And the easiest thing to start with, this may take a little bit of looking, the easiest thing to start with is to search your PDF for prepaid. And I have nothing for prepaid. So I'm going to search because it was on my balance sheet at other current assets. I'm going to search for other current assets. Okay, so that's not showing. So let's see if I just do current assets. Doesn't look like it's finding that either, which is very strange because I know that that's on the balance sheet. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna go and find the notes to the financial statement. Now the notes to the financial statement, some of you may find yours easier than this is taking. This is taking, this is difficult. All right, so you notice that here I am, I'm on my financial statements, and here is my balance sheet. And what I'm looking for is if they detailed out this other current assets to see if I have any prepaid expenses in there. So I'm gonna go down here, and at the end of the financial statements, I'm gonna get to what we call the footnotes. And I'm just going to go down to the footnotes. And they are pretty much in order of the balance sheet. I'm just going to sort of look through here. See, here's one on inventories. And you're going to be looking at this in a different chapter. But I'm going to keep going. And it doesn't look like, because now I'm at receivables. We're going to look at that too. It does not look, now I'm into, if you notice, now it's like in liabilities and debt. So if I haven't found it yet, it is not in here. Make a good faith effort, because if I feel like you might have it and you didn't look for it, you're going to get marked off if I find it. So you better make a good faith effort to try to find it. All right. So I'm going to go back here. And I'm going to say the prepaid expenses were not broken out on the balance sheet. Okay, now, if you had prepaid expenses, how would you do this? And I'm just gonna illustrate it and then I'm gonna clear mine away. You would put prepaid expenses here and you would put total assets here. You would name your prepaid expenses. You would actually probably skip a line so you could put the years because you'd have two years on the balance sheet. Then you do the math, right? So you'd have the percentage here. And you divide 
prepaid expenses into total assets. And that's what you would do. Since I didn't have them, I can't do it. Sometimes there are going to be some things you cannot do. And then you just have to say why. So I'm going to just clear this, all of this. If you have individual questions on this, please don't hesitate to ask me. Okay, so let's go back to my Word document. And we have one more thing for this chapter. And I'm not even going to copy and paste it because it's record your stock price on the stock sheet and on the group sheet. So I'm going to go back to my thing. I'm going to go back to the stock sheet. I'm going to put today's date. So whatever date you do this, if you do more than one chapter on a date, please try to break them up by about a week. I'm going to put today's date and I'm going to go back to my Yahoo. And I'm going to look. I don't have the closing date for today. So I'm going to use the closing date for yesterday. So I'm going to go to summary. And my previous close was 20940. I'm going to go back to my. I'm going to put that in before I forget. And then it really wasn't. 323 it was 322 because that was my date okay and then I, let me take the percentage and this was a decrease b24 minus I should have taken b25 so I messed up my thing there let's go equal to this minus this divided by this oops I can't be right oh I gotta put parentheses mm -hmm. okay so it went down 7.7 percent the last time and now I can just copy that formula down and it's actually from the last time I recorded it's up almost two percent so now I could do this. It's kind of fun. I could do cumulative difference. So now I can take, let's see, how do I do this? Um, equal this plus this. So I'm only down 6% right about 6% so far this semester. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and save. The market's been down because of the crisis going on. If you're watching this in a different year, um, obviously that won't make any sense. Okay, so we're now gonna go to the class sheet. We go back to our homepage, back to our financial statement analysis project. We have the 211 spreadsheet okay so I've gotten these in order so I am going to be down here so I've got them in and I'm gonna go to my word file whoops my Excel file and look at my thing 20940 is what I need to put in there. 209.40. All right. So I've done that, and that saves on its own. Okay, so now I'm done with Chapter 4. So I'm going to save. And I'm going to just save my document for another day. We have one more chapter before you're going to turn uh, this project in. So that's the end of chapter four.